Welcome to another episode of Mexican The Kitchen. Today, this video is gonna be a bit different. I'm not gonna cook. I'm going to prepare some cheladas, micheladas. Uh, this is a very Mexican drink. It's usually made with beer, some lime, some sauces, some chili powder, salt, maybe some chamoy, and many other uh, kind of ingredients. It varies depending on the region. I've noticed some places kind of switch names around. Some places call it and make it however they want and that creates a lot of variations as with many other recipes. For this kind of recipe you usually use these very light beers. Some people prefer the darker of course, it's completely up to you, you can do this with anything you like. But I'm going to use of course the very typical Sol and Corona. We also have this Sombrero, which if you ask me it's a bit of a stereotypical name but it's a decent beer. And we also have these two Finnish beers. These are local, this is from Saima Brewery. These I'm not really sure, but they're quite decent. They're like very similar to Corona and Sol. Very easy to drink, light beers. So we're going to use this and let's see how it goes. I hope you like the video. Press like, subscribe, activate the bell, share it with your friends, all those kind of things. And let's make some niches. For this recipe, we're doing something we call escarchar. Escarchar will translate to something like frosting and you will see why in a minute. For this, some people might take the lime and just squeeze it onto a plate, put the mug there upside down just to make sure all the rim is wet. But I find cutting the lime slightly and just using it to rub it all over the rim it's a bit easier and less messy. Of course, if you are doing many of these, it's way easier to just have a lot of lime juice on a plate and just repeat the process. All we have to do now is take our mug, put it upside down on a plate with some salt, now we have a rim that resembles a bit like frost, that's probably why it's called like that. This is because we want some saltiness and this way you will get a bit of salt every time you have a sip. Of course this step is optional, I've noticed some people don't love it, especially if you didn't grow up in Mexico and you are not used to this, it might be a bit weird at the beginning, but also some people start liking it the more they try them, so this might be a bit of an acquired taste. We're going to start by squeezing a lime. Of course, you can do this by hand, but if you have one of these squeezers, I think they're very handy and it's something that you will find in most Mexican kitchens. This is the most simple version of this. Of course, we're going to take a Corona. Now we're going to just open it and we're going to serve it into our mug. Personally, I know this as a chelada, but I've noticed depending on the region, they might call it different names. So every time I go and try to order something like this, I will usually ask what's in there because every place has their different versions and different recipes. In my city, this is how they serve it, but in some places where there's a bit more heat, you might also get it with some ice in there, especially in places where your beer will get really hot in just a matter of minutes. Here in Finland, I will skip the ice. Our next drink is starting in a very similar way. We're going to cut our lime, we're going to cover the rim, and then we can continue. I don't know how popular these are outside of Mexico, at least I haven't seen them that often, let me know in the comments where are you watching from and if you have seen this where you live or somewhere else. Now I have a plate here and instead of using salt, I'm going to use tahin. Tahin is one of those very Mexican, very popular condiments. Tahin is a mix of salt, some dried chili and a bit of a lime taste. I think this combination of flavors is something you will find a lot in Mexico. You might have tahin on top of some carrots or cucumber with lime, you might have it on top of fruits, you might also find this kind of flavor on candy where you will have a coating of salty, spicy, kind of a bit more acid flavor combined with the sweetness of the candy. We will use this tahin in the same way as we used the salt earlier and we're just going to make sure we cover the whole rim of our mug. If you don't eat spicy food, you might be a bit wary of having chili on the rim of your drink, but this only has a bit of the flavor, it's not super spicy, it will just give a gentle kick. This time I just want a bit of the tahin there, you can of course add more lime and then just go crazy with it, it's completely up to you. I'm going to start by adding a bit of tahin into the mug. Amounts are completely up to you, I'm just using a bit and they are completely up to taste. Next thing I'm adding is a bit of freshly ground black pepper. And I know this might be a bit weird if you're not used to these drinks, but trust me, this is definitely worth it. Next thing we're adding is a splash of Maggi sauce. 
this sauce is very popular in Mexico, especially for snacks, and here in Finland I find it from the Asian store. Next thing to have is some Worcestershire sauce. This one is also very popular, and these both are used together very often, like in this drink, sometimes on top of potato chips or maybe some sausages. Now we are adding a bit more of a kick and we are using a couple drops of Tabasco. Tabasco sauce is actually not Mexican, it's made in the US, but it's also very popular for snacks. I'm going to also add one lime into this drink. One thing I've heard very often from a lot of people who visit Mexico for the first time is how they expected everything to have chili and they are surprised because sometimes it feels like lime is even more widely used than chili and I would have to agree, I know a lot of people that eat just everything with lime. Last thing we have to do is pop our beer, we're going to use salt for this one and we just serve it on top of our sauce. I would call this one a michelada, but as I said, there's thousands of recipes for micheladas and people nowadays go really crazy with these, you'll find all sorts of different sauces and mixes, so you can play with the ingredients a bit and just come up with the recipe you prefer. In some cities where the temperatures raise quite a lot, it might be common to see that people add ice into this drink. Personally, I don't add it because in my city we don't usually do. Once again, this is completely up to you. This recipe is a variation from the last one. I'm going to repeat most of the same steps. I'm going to cover the rim with some tahin. I'm going to add some salt, pepper, a bit of tahin, some Tabasco, Maggi, Worcestershire sauce. I am also adding some lime. But then, once all these ingredients are in, I'm not going to add my beer. I'm going to use something called clamato. Clamato is a tomato and clam juice. Clamato is non-alcoholic, but it's used to prepare Bloody Marys, for example, or it can be drunk with beer, like in this case, and you can call it clamachelas or simply clamato. How much clamato you add is completely up to you. In this case, I'm adding about one quarter of the mug. If you have never had this before, I would recommend you add a bit of it, add some beer, and then just taste. If you want it a bit more strong, then you can keep adding. For this one, I'm using this Saima beer. It was pretty decent. It's very similar to all the other light beers we have been having here. If you like Bloody Mary, I'm sure this is a drink that you will enjoy. This has a lot of the tomato flavor. The clam you can barely taste. It's just like a very mild taste, but it's very characteristic from this kind of drink. Just like with all the other drinks, if you want to add some ice, you can do. In my city, they never add anything. For the last drink, I'm going to use some chamoy. Chamoy is a sauce made with chilies, with fruits, it's a bit sour, it's a bit spicy, it's very sweet. Here in Finland, I buy at Las Tunas Dorefai and they have two different versions. They have the mango flavored and the traditional flavor. In this case, I'm going to add some chamoy and we could use this chamoy instead of the lime juice, just put the mug in here, but I want the chamoy to be a bit thicker. And one option is to just throw it into the pan and just let it simmer for a while, make it a bit thicker, or we can also add a bit of sugar, a bit of salt, a bit of chili, and a bit of lime. In this case, I'm adding all those ingredients. I want to make my own mixture of the chamoy. I'm going to mix it. I want it to be a bit thicker. That's why I'm adding so much uh, tahin, but of course you can do as much as you want. As I said before, with this recipe, it's very hard to give amounts. All these amounts are completely up to you. It's usually just a splash of everything. In this case, you can just taste. If it's too liquid for your taste, then add a bit more of the dry ingredients. If it's a bit too dry, then you can also add a bit more chamoy, a bit more lime juice, keep mixing. Once the texture is right, then we can take our glass, just dip it in there. You will notice a lot of places overdo it, they will just dip a very thick line on the glass and then it will become a mess, your hands will get covered on this thing, but it of course depends completely on you if you want to do it just very simple, a very thin line or go crazy with it. Personally, I think it's a really nice flavor, it might be a bit of an acquired taste if you're not used to it, but I think it goes so well with beer and it's something most Mexicans will agree it's a really, really good combination. Here we can see how it slowly drips, but still we're going to add maybe one spoon, maybe two, 
you can go crazy if you want and add a bit more, but we also want a bit of this sauce into our drink. Once again, we are adding some lime. And if you are doing many of these drinks, I recommend you just squeeze a lot of lime juice into a bottle, then maybe make a small hole on the cap and use that just to pour a couple squeezes of that and it will make your job way easier and then you can make many of these very quickly. Next thing we're adding is some Valentina sauce. In Mexico we use these for everything. I've heard some people call it the Mexican ketchup because you will see these everywhere and I know people that use these on sandwiches on top of chips of course but also in soups and in all kinds of things. We are also adding a splash of Maggi and Worcestershire sauce. Now we are adding our sombrero beer. This is a very cheap version of Sol and Corona. It's quite close. It's nothing special, but it's not a bad beer, very easy to drink. And especially for this kind of drink, you might want to use a bit of a cheaper beer. Our drink is ready. And this is the kind of drink people are topping with something extra all the time. In this case, I'm going to use a candy. The candy I'm using is called Banderilla. Banderillas are a straw covered with tamarind candy, it has a bit of a sweetness, a bit of uh, spiciness, it's also a bit sour, it goes very well with these flavors. You will see very often they sell this candy with this beer and they just leave it inside, you can use it as a mixer and take it out, bite it and put it back in, just have it there. I must say from all these drinks this is my favorite. This is the way I make micheladas, ancheladas. Of course these are completely up to you, you can mix these different recipes, you can make your own, you can also add or remove ingredients, change them for whatever you can find where you live. Um, some people also add, for example, shrimps. Some people add crazy things like chicken on top and like this. It has gone really over the top. But the most important thing is that you add things you like, you, you find the ingredients you prefer to have, and then you can just make your own, make it like exactly as you like it. But just play with it, make your own, find what you like, and... See you in the next one.